Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. Well, he's still looking at something. Let's see if we can see. Huh? Oh, I see what he's looking at. We've got a bear in the trees on the other side of the track. That has caught his attention. So that's what he's staring at. Hey, oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh-oh, I think, I think he might be in trouble. Ooh, I don't think this is going to end well. So I have just stained the uh, scenery in the gorge that I did uh, in the other video. Put a very little hint of ground cover over it while the stain was still wet. Uh, some uh, very fine sifted dirt, as well as just some Woodland Scenics ground cover. And that uh, actually looks pretty good. This area over here, I will add a little bit more in the way of uh, ground cover and some vegetation, a little bit away from the trestle. So some of that is going to be hidden up at the top, where I've got uh, more like what I've got over here. Uh, but... Uh, for a very short and quick little project that turned out pretty good. So I will finish that tomorrow. It's late Monday night. I've only been out here for a little while. Uh, this is the only thing I've really gotten done tonight with the exception of uh, nothing. So Tuesday morning, I have uh, taken a day off from work. I'm gonna be doing some stuff this afternoon, but this morning out on the layout. So I've got ground cover in on the front of the uh, trestle now. Everything is basically done in this area here. Oh, I see a little bit of glue right there that I need to cover before it sets. So I do have a couple of the JTT trees I'll probably put in here, just in a couple of little spots. Uh, they kind of represent a few little shrubs. And then uh, when I'm doing more work with super trees, I will uh, add couple of chunks of that and a couple of areas here but basic ground cover is done so I'm gonna go on and do the uh, sides and finish that up and uh, see what I come up with here then this scene for the uh, major scenery anyway on this part of the uh, center module will be finished well, ground cover on this side is uh, wrapping up I'll let uh, the glue dry but uh, just some basics in textures for the ground. I am making up a little bit of super tree material to kind of add in some of this, and that'll be coming up next. I'm using uh, some of the super tree material that I bought at the train show that was in Richmond, Virginia here. Oh, oh geez, it's been a couple of months ago already. So I'm taking some of the segments and I'm making small trees out of them. Uh, the larger ones I've spray painted with the flat camo brown, and then uh, some of the real small pieces I'm just going to leave uh, natural like this. And uh, what I will do here in just a minute is uh, take out uh, my hairspray, give them a good soak, and then uh, give them uh, a little bit of a treatment, just like I did with the pine tree. Sprinkle it on, get a nice texture, and then uh, plant them and see how they look. So I have this one pretty much done on this side. I've come back in, I've added super trees, just a couple on uh, the hill slope near the trestle, a uh, super tree, and then uh, three JTT trees, which I've added a little bit more uh, to them, just kind of fluff them up a little bit. And then some more super trees over here mixed in amongst the pine trees. Uh, thinking, you know, the roadbed for the train had been here for a while, so you're going to get uh, pine trees in the background, you're going to get some more deciduous trees that are going to pop up. Uh, when I do my scenery, I coat the surface with 50-50 uh, dilute white glue, use a brush and just kind of paint it over the entire surface area, and then come in with a variety of different uh, colors and textures of ground foam, uh, garden dirt, uh, everything just kind of blend it because you don't see in very many cases except for like a lawn or maybe a sports field where the colors are uniform it's always a mix you get little weeds you get little bumps you get little different colors and textures 
So I got that done, and uh, down here I did plant one super tree that I had left over. Uh, even though from this angle it looks small, it's actually six inches tall. So a nice uh, tree in the background. Let's see if I can see it from back here. Yeah, kind of, kind of see it. <laughs> so I'm ready to switch over to this area. Same thing. I'm going to paint on uh, wood or paint on the uh, dilute white glue. Use a variety of colors that I've got. I've got earth, burnt grass, uh, both fine, and then I've got coarse burnt grass, coarse uh, earth colored turf, some brighter green grass uh, over there, and then uh, dirt from the garden, as well as a little bit of material still left over uh, from what I cut off of the uh, pine trees. It's going to be enough to do this little area here. Then I can start focusing on the track in this area, but uh, making some progress. So we are at Tuesday night. Uh, I've been out here off and on today, not much. Uh, did a little family thing uh, this afternoon during the uh, spring break time. So uh, didn't get out here all day, but uh, this whole scene is coming together pretty nice. I added uh, some super tree material as well as some additional ground cover up against the uh, cliff face over here. A few little super trees there. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna clean the track. I wanna run uh, the train through this scene and just see how it looks. Uh, you know, that's gonna be a nice little uh, area like right here for uh, some rail fanning. So I will uh, give the track a quick wipe. I've been spraying uh, isopropyl alcohol and it just does leave a little bit of a film when it interacts with uh, the track a little bit. So I'll clean that up. And uh, this all give me a chance to uh, see how that caboose goes. Wednesday night after work and I've been out on the layout for a little bit. I had kept uh, a handful of ties from when I was doing some flex track work in different areas. So I've come in and I've sort of shaved the bottom off a little bit so that I can slide a tie just under you know where the, uh, the gaps are and I will come back in and I will glue it in place uh, a little bit later. But uh, that's there. I came back in and I added a few ties in here. This is the only place where I still have a gap. These are rail joiners and you know what? A little bit of a space like that. It kind of matches. You get a little bit of a gap like that. So I'm fine with that. That'll more or less disappear when I put the uh, ballast on. You know, put another one in over here. So really the track for what's visible on the O scale is uh, done for now. I will, uh, like I said, glue, but uh, the next step is going to be to uh, play with some paint colors and uh, paint some ties and see if I can come up with a uh, railroad tie brown-ish color. That'll be next. Let's see what I can uh, manage there. So still Wednesday evening and I've been out doing some uh, painting of ties and rail. You can see the before and there's the after. And this is of course the center module and then the other one of the side modules. So I've been uh, coming in and painting along here and it looks pretty good. Here I've got to wait for the glue to dry a little bit before I paint the tops of those. But I've gotten uh, a ways down. You know, I've still got to do some additional work on top of this trestle. And then uh, I've stopped right here. I've got to put a couple more dabs of paint on my paper plate to uh, finish. And then I will go about six inches, maybe eight inches beyond the tunnel portal. Because if you're looking in, you'll be able to see it. 
uh, and I will have sort of a wrap around the tunnel portal in the next section. So I wanted to kind of make it look pretty good and blended. So what I've been doing is using basic colors. So for the rail, I've been using the uh, hammered iron again. I really like this stuff. Uh, you can see if I go down a little bit lower, you can see how it looks on this rail and there's the original rail. Actually, it makes it look finer. <laughs> it makes the rail look like it's not standing out as much. So I really like that effect. For the ties, it's a blend of uh, iron oxide, of uh, this, uh, what they call urban putty, which looks kind of like mud, and then a the, uh, steel gray. So as I've done before, I put a small blob on a paper plate, you know, urban putty, gray, uh, iron oxide, and then uh, just use the end of the brush and just kind of dab, 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 uh, dab, dab, dab. <laughs> so I can load my brush up and I do anywhere from one to maybe three ties at a time. And I'll come in and just kind of put it on in the middle. Then I'll come back in and work it up towards the tie plate on both sides and then come over on the other side and then do the uh, ends of the tie. Uh, that way I've got reasonably consistent colors, but it still blends a little bit as you're going through. So if I do upwards of three at a time, you know, I'll get maybe some clusters of color like here or two that I did similar. Uh, but again, it's just enough variation as you're rotating your brush and you're dabbing that you get some pretty cool textures and colors coming out of this. So I'm happy with the result. So a little bit later tonight, I will probably finish up the painting and then I will dig out my O scale ballast and uh, just kind of start laying it and uh, see how that looks. So here is the first ballasting done on the O scale track that I did tonight. So I've got my ballast in place and it is glued up to the bridge. So I will just let this sit and uh, see what it looks like tomorrow. But uh, there is the before for comparison. So Atlas uh, Flex Track, Atlas Flex Track. I think it uh, has made a bit of a difference here. So tomorrow I will uh, ballast that piece over there and uh, see if I need to do any additional work on this one over here. And then once I get everything done, and if I can get the ballasting done soon enough after work tomorrow, I'll clean the tracks and uh, I can run some trains again. So Thursday night after work, and I have ballasted this little section of track, and then uh, also have glued it down. This is looking pretty good. I did put some ballast in there, and I will glue that down uh, yet tonight. I'll probably come a little bit farther uh, just maybe up to about here with ballast. Again, what I'm going to do with this when I get to it is I will make, uh, you know, a cover over the track up to about this point. So that as you're looking from outside, you'll be able to see like rock walls on the inside. The train will disappear. It'll get dark. And then, uh, you know, I'm open in this area so that I can get my hand in if I need to or, you know, access. So I'll make it where at least the illusion continues a little bit farther into what that tunnel is going to be. Uh, let's see. I have come back in and done a little bit more detailing on this side. The glue is dry. And while it is kind of hard to see, you can see that my tie plates uh, look a little rusty. Not much, but a little. So what I've done on that... Is I brought out my chalk set, and I got this at like Hobby Lobby for like six bucks. Variety of chalks and earth tones. And here is one that looks like rust. Um, you can see this is kind of to a point. I scraped all of this off, and I use that for weathering on the HO and N scale track to kind of give it the rusty appearance. But on the O scale, this worked pretty good to come in and just lightly do a quick, just like a tick on each of the tie plates. Didn't need much, just a small amount. And then once I had that done, I came back in with a stiff brush. And you can see that it's actually a little on the orange side. And just, you know, just kind of went down and rubbed it in. Made sure that my ballast glue was set. You know, nice and dry so that I'm not popping ballast. And then just rub it. You get most of it off, but it leaves enough where you get 
what looks like rusty tie plates. And I did it on both sides. Uh, so you can kind of look down, you know, and it gives it a nice effect. It's effective. It looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. So you know what? I think I'm going to uh, let that dry down there, clean the track. And then the last segment on this particular uh, video is going to be a train running. I'm not sure. Eh, I've got the caboose on the uh, you know, F unit, so I'll run the F unit. So I think that's going to do it for this video. Got enough stuff on it. We'll see uh, what I can start doing next time. I think I'm going to be uh, starting on this area on the next video. I'll still do a little bit more over here, and I'll kind of show you what I get accomplished at the start, and then uh, we transition. So keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.